We are back in business on the field. Thank goodness for that. It's MLB Central on a Thursday. Mark DeRosa, Robert Flores, Lauren Shahadi, and we're more than thrilled to be joined by Trevor Story. Good morning to you, Trevor. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing good. How are y'all? We're doing good. Great. Better now. Summer Camp 2020. Have you ever been a camper before? How's it going so far? What's, what's new? Set the scene. Yeah, it's, it's a bizarre scene for sure. Um, you know, totally different than what we're, we've always been used to or accustomed to. Um, so just kind of got to be fluid and, um, you know, be open to, to having a different routine, I think is what I've come to, come to accept right now. Hey, Trevor, what were you doing during the quarantine? Were you, was anything you were binge watching, uh, workouts change a little bit, something you're trying to get better at coming into this season? Kind of take me through those like quiet moments by yourself. Yeah, um, there was a lot of quiet moments, man. I'm sure that, you know, y'all had the same type of thing going on. Um, just trying to be really safe with this whole thing and, and staying inside. And, um, you know, we watched Stranger Things. That was awesome. That, that kind of got us through the, the meat of the quarantine. And man, I love that show. I was always stayed away from it, but I love it. Um, and obviously a lot of baseball work. I did switch up the workouts a little bit um, more towards end season just to kind of keep my body in the same type of shape that that it's used to at this time of the year. Um, and, you know, always, always just trying to work on my craft, always trying to find different things, little things here or there to, to help give me an advantage when the season starts. And I feel like I did a good job of that. Trevor, this is probably a difficult question, but I'm going to hit it with you anyway. Do you think Hopper's still alive? <laughs> <laughs> I think so, man. I really no, right? So. He's got to yeah. be alive. He has to be. He's, I mean, he's such a great part of the show. And, I mean, we saw him in the trailer for the fourth season, so. Perfect. There you go. Yeah. Um, Trevor, have you thought about, and I'm sure you have, but when you kind of go through the scenarios of all that you and your teammates and other teams around the league are going to be facing – dealing with the day-to-day -day, and you think about what is it going to be like what are those moments what are those thoughts like yeah you know the first thing that comes to mind is you know it's going to be challenging um there's no doubt about that and I think you know like I said earlier that our routines are going to be shot um, we're going to have to find find different ways and um you know uh, other than we're normal to to to, to get ready for the game um uh, there's so many different rules and stipulations, which, um, you know, rightly so, we have to keep this thing. Um, we got to keep the virus at bay, and hopefully um, we, can, we can have all 30 teams go through this thing, and, you know, without a glitch. And, um, we just – we know that it's going to be hard, but we feel like we can do it, and I think we're going to have to man-to-man -man, uh, keep each other accountable to uh, not put ourselves at risk. It's so interesting you're saying that because a couple days ago we were talking amongst ourselves and Dero goes, let me get this straight. Mike Trout hits a home run. I can't give him a hug. Have you guys discussed contactless home run celebrations? <laughs> yes or no? No, not yet. Um, <laughs> I think we're all just trying to get used to the, you know, the testing and all the little stipulations that we have at the field right now. Um, but we need to have that convo soon. I might bring it up today to the boys. It's going to be – it's weird, man. It's going to be so different, um, but we have to do it. You know, we'll find a way to do it. All right, Trevor. Power rankings came out for the first time yesterday, and the usual suspects, the Yankees, Dodgers, Astros, are at the top of the list. But in a 60-game sprint, you know, dude, there's going to be about two or three teams that shock the world here and get in. Make the pitch for why the Rockies – I was on you hard two years ago, and then you crushed my soul last year. <laughs> Tell me why the Rockies can get it rolling in 60 games. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I think we were 23rd, I think, in the power rings or something yeah. like that. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, man, we see that. You know, we, we see that and we feel that. And, you know, we, we already know that people have kind of already written us off, um, you know, since we had a bad year last year. But – um, we feel like, why not, man? In a 60-game stretch, we feel like this is, you know, it's almost built for a team like us. You know, we, we feel like we can, um, we can get really hot, and I feel like we can sustain that at, you know, in, in that many games. And, um, you know, we're, like I've always said, we have a very confident group. We've always been very close. Uh, I think this will make us closer. 
And, you know, I feel like, why not, man? We, we're, we're a very talented group, and we feel like we can do it. Yeah, Trevor, you guys were 37 and 23 over, over a couple of stretches last year. And I was at your camp before things got were shut down. And I, I was taken aback, and I was surprised by how really forthright you guys were with saying, look, we were bad last year. I mean, there was a real sense of determination of, hey, we, we were be much better than what we showed last year. Yeah, exactly. I think we were, you know, we were holding ourselves accountable. We, we expected a lot out of ourselves as a team, you know, individually we did and um, we didn't live up to those expectations. And that's always tough, man. And, you know, in, a, in the world of sports, you don't always live up to what you want to do. And um, as a team, we, we know we're better than what, what we did last year. And um, so that, that, that's kind of why we were so outspoken about that. And I feel like this year, um, you know, obviously things have changed with the 60 game season, but um, you know, it almost lines up really well for us. Yeah. You lived up to what you wanted to do, Trevor, right from the start in 2016, the seven home runs in six games. We were all like, who is this guy? And enter the annoying puns about your last name. I mean, they were just like every <laughs> single time you got to the plate. From then to now, how have you evolved as a hitter and what do you continue to work on? Um, yeah, I think, you know, starting off the way I did, um, you know, with all the home runs, you know, it was such a whirlwind for me. And, you know, I was just trying to survive at the time. Um, you know, I didn't know, I didn't really know, you know, what I was doing. Um, so just going from kind of the survival mode into kind of, you know, getting, getting comfortable in the big leagues and, and realizing what I need to do and then struggling in 2017, I think, uh, you know, learning from that and having a good second half in 17, I think really, uh, really helped me sustain what I've been able to do the past two years and um, just trying to be as consistent as I can. I think that's the name of the game. You know, I think d Rowe can attest to that. It's all about, um, you know, when you're not feeling great, finding ways to compete and, and, and almost keeping it more of a mental game than it is anything else for me. And um, that's helped me be able to compete on a day in and day out basis. Hey, Trevor, real quick, I, the one guy who I'm telling you, man, he sung your praises from the moment he signed there. He's like, D-Row, the best player on our team is Trevor Story. And the guy who told me that was Ian Desmond. How much are you going to miss him in the clubhouse this year? And I know he's taking a step back for the right reasons, but I know he'll yeah. be missed. His presence will be missed. Yeah, that's my guy, man. He's, uh, he's special to me, you know, as a friend, as a mentor. I'm proud to call him my friend and mentor and as a teammate. Um, you know, it doesn't get better than that than that guy. He's yeah. uh, you know, he's always there for anybody who has questions. Um, we're gonna miss him big time. And I think um, you know, not just on the field, but like you said in the clubhouse, he's he's such a presence there and you know, kind of a calming influence for for guys to to lean on and 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 ask questions and um but you know, I have a feeling that he's he's gonna he's still gonna have a big impact on on what we do as a team this year. I know I'm gonna be talking to him pretty much every week, and I'm sure he's gonna be locked in on the games, and he'll have stuff for us. And um, yeah, I, I still think he's gonna have a big impact. Nice. Well, Trevor, with uh, with, with everything that's going on, and and the, I know the sporting public, the baseball fans, uh, thankful that you guys are uh, willing to take the. Um, Take this on. As you said, it's going to be a big challenge, but uh, we wish you nothing but the best. Stay healthy, and more importantly, stay safe. And uh, we will see you uh, hopefully a ve very, very soon. And we want to remind you guys that MLB Network, as, as most teams are reporting for summer camp day one, it's going to be tomorrow. MLB Network and MLB Tonight, we're going to be covering it wall-to-wall, -wall, live from 11 a.m. Eastern through 5 p.m., followed by an hour-long recap show. So for uh, everyone, uh, be on the lookout for that. For Lauren Shahadi, Mark DeRosa, and of course, Colorado Rocky shortstop Trevor Story, I'm Robert Flores. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.